Every time the Spirit of the Spirit Lord moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time Every time the Spirit of the Spirit Lord moving in my heart, I will pray. On the mountain my Lord spoke, out his mouth came fire and smoke. In the valley on my knees, ask my Lord, have mercy please. Every time Every I time the Spirit Lord moving in my heart, he came to Carnegie Hall in, in the blizzard from Chicago, and he said, his remarks was, well, it was better to be Dr. King late than the late Dr. King. And the sad part about it is the very next month, as you know, he was assassinated in Memphis. Uh, my name is Esther Cooper Jackson. Um, uh, the Jackson is from my husband's name. Both of us went through many battles of the civil rights activities. I had an older sister and a younger sister. There were three of us. My mother had been an activist in civil rights all of her life. We subscribed to the Crisis Magazine all of our lives. The magazine of the NAACP, founded by W.E.B. Du Bois. In the early days, it was like the only publication that published anything about what was happening in black life. The crisis uh, had editorials on lynchings, on problems of blacks all over the country, the link with international struggles. Uh, and uh, we waited for it. We got it every month in our home. And we sat around the table and we would discuss articles in the crisis. We're in the middle, still in the middle of a struggle for our rights. And despite some advances that have been made, and, and they occurred because of struggle and sacrifice, uh, that we have to continue the struggle. When we were growing up, our parents, particularly my mother, and she said, yes, I want you to get as much education as you can, but I hope you don't think your education is just for you, that you're getting it just to advance yourself as individuals, but that you will know that you're getting it for, for our people. I had uh, been given a fellowship to go to the University of Chicago to work on my doctorate. And so Edward Strong and, and uh, Lewis Burnham uh, and James Jackson asked me if I'd come down from the summer, the summer after I got my master's, and work on the voting campaign. I know if my dad had been alive, he wouldn't have been opposed to my going someplace, but he'd say, well, why Alabama? Why go into a state like Alabama? It's dangerous. It was very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I lived in a, in a, a housing project in Birmingham, um, and, but I stayed seven years. One of the things my husband James was doing was to organize the black women tobacco workers in Richmond, Virginia. Just terrible work. They took their children into the factories, uh, they had no coats. They would use the burlap bags for coats for the children. He and a whole number of other activists uh, in the South, and particularly in the Southern Negro Youth Congress, decided to organize the black women tobacco workers. And this was the first breakthrough uh, of tobacco workers in the South. Then it spread to North Carolina and other places uh, where people were working in the tobacco field. After I lived in a, a settlement house, a Methodist settlement house, in the poorest section of Nashville, where the streets weren't paved, where people, blacks, were so poor, uh, it had a devastating effect on me. And I said, uh, I would like to do some research on black women domestic workers, in the South particularly. So I started, um, interviewing some of these families. I spent a lot of time with them. I got to know some of the children. And so that um, my master's thesis is Negro women domestic workers in relation to um, trade unionism.
Well, I've been invited to uh, some, some of the uh, conferences of the domestic workers, for example, in New York. They've had some big meetings, and I've, I've brought with me uh, some of the contracts <laughs> of the domestic workers at the time when I was doing, and some of them said to me, nothing's changed. <laughs> you know, this is interesting, but not that much has changed. I first really heard Dr. Du Bois uh, in Washington when I was a youngster, when my mother took me and my two sisters to a church in Washington to hear him speak. Um, and his early works were in our home. We knew of his significance to the whole civil rights movement and to the country. Many people said that this would be an instrument for the struggle for civil rights, that you had to have a printed publication that you could put in the hands of people involved in the struggle. And this is the way uh, we thought of uh, Freedom Ways. I was a sociologist, so I, I wasn't really a journalist. But I always had a great interest in the written word. The black newspapers, when newspapers would not show the lynchings and the problems of black, it was the black newspapers who played that role. And these, like many of these black newspapers came into our home. Freedom Ways is the one place uh, in those years, 25 years, that shows a history of the, the civil rights movement, how it relates to the international movement, that portrayed the works of the great black women poets, all of them, many of whom published for the first time, in, Alice Walker for the first, published in Freedom Ways for the first time, her short stories, her fiction, we published first. Um, and it, it helped to open the door uh, for some of the leading cultural figures in black life. I met him, I knew him well. I mean, I knew him. And uh, I remember the event we had, and um, Dr. King was there, and everybody who came from Carnegie Hall there. You could see the respect and admiration, and little knowing that he only had another month to live. I think that he saw him as the historic figure that caused the whole movement to take place in the first place that Dr. Du Bois was a pioneer uh, and that he was, um, gave his life up, really. Uh, and you'll have to recall that during the McCarthy era, he and the peace movement uh, were arrested and he had handcuffs put on him. He was found not guilty. But it was just, uh, of all the events that happened during the McCarthy years, I think this is one of the most horrible things that had been done. I think it's historic um, that uh, we have this birthday for Dr. King. And even though it's accepted now generally all over the country and known in other parts of the world, uh, one forgets that there was much opposition to, to designating this holiday at first. I will never forget when, Do when uh, Dr. King made his speech at Riverside Church. Uh, against the war in Vietnam. There were certain, certain black leaders in some of the major civil rights organizations and others who were opposed to Dr. King taking this position, but he wouldn't waver. And I think this is one of his great contributions um, to the whole struggle for democracy in this country. He was convinced that uh, this was something he could not support and that blacks should not support also. I think we have a long way to go in that. I, otherwise, how can one explain um, in New York City, which is typical of these million dollar 
two bedroom apartments going up on the 60 some floor of some building. And there are people who don't have uh, several hundred dollars to pay the rent for a month. There's a great, I agree, there's great inequality in this country. And I think if people uh, like Dr. King and before that people like W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, we need leaders like that today to speak out on this issue.